I only have one question. You wouldn't happen to know where the front doors from Mount Carmel ended up, would you? You were able to find this big lighter, but not two seven-foot doors. The doors are, are highly significant, and I think the inability to find those doors was also highly significant. Must have burned with the rest of the building. Both front doors. And Dan sees that as a life raft and starts emphasizing these doors. They are central to both the defense and prosecution story of what happened on February 28th. The doors were a crucial piece of evidence to determine who shot first, how many shots were fired, those kinds of things. And these doors were metal, and they were somewhat impervious to the fire. So you believe the other door melted? Yes. Because it was made of aluminum. Is aluminum magnetic? No, it's not magnetic. So this refrigerator magnet, would it stick to aluminum? Uh, no, it, it wouldn't. This is what happens when you have the architect of a government raid also prosecuting the same case. Cogdell presents this theory to the press that uh, the prosecutor is motivated by something other than justice and that it's a sort of personal vendetta against the Branch Davidians. The fact that Bill Johnson was the person who signed off on the search warrant at Mount Carmel seemed like a just basic conflict of interest to most people involved. Whoever can raise my mama from the dead will be the next true prophet of Mount Carmel. You dug up Lois's body? George Roden digs up the corpse of his mother. Unless you have actual evidence of corpse abuse or some other crime, there's not much that I can do. I think he's fixing to come after us. Well, then you might want to think about getting something to defend yourself with. David Koresh wants to go back to Mount Carmel to get evidence of corpse abuse and knows that he can't just waltz in there unarmed. That's where he starts to arm himself and to arm his people. We'll take uh, five of the Rugers and uh, throw in some of them camel suits, too. In Paul's experience, he didn't, hadn't used guns, doesn't understand guns. We ran into the church, and you see this dead body. It's a, such a surreal experience. Another one of David Koresh's favorite films was Full Metal Jacket. I felt like David Koresh was enjoying it, feeling like a soldier, as much as it was a serious situation. He was tried for uh, attempted murder. He was found uh, not guilty. His followers kind of took it as an act of God. They might buy this whole Messiah thing you've been feeding them, but I remember when you were still pissing your bed. Stop! The mother and son scene between Bonnie and Vernon, I think it's a really powerful moment. He kind of finds his own family because he has such a tough biological family. God speaks to me! So that when he finally sees his mom, you're able to see kind of all the weight and issues from the years before that made him who he is now. David Koresh is my real name. Do you think you know better than God? Vernon Howell became David Koresh. We thought that was a really interesting kind of Machiavellian rise of this person who realizes he has this, this talent and this power that he never dreamed of. David Koresh, I believe, comes from King Cyrus, and he was very inspired by that storyline and ultimately changes his name to Koresh because of that. Your Honor, the government calls Kathy Schroeder to the stand. This is like a family. This is like your sister getting up there and double-crossing you. Kathy Schroeder testifies against her, her fellow Davidians, and it was a real hard moment for them. Kathy Schroeder gets up on the stand and tells what my character perceived to be really indicting lies that only serve the story and the narrative that our enemies are creating. It is such a betrayal. I was the one who made sure that everybody had a gun. And are some of the people that you pass out these weapons to here today? Yes. She said that she's put a weapon in every one of the defendant's hands. So it's going to be very hard for them to come back from this. They think that that has shattered their hopes for forever being seen sympathetically by a jury. No matter what the government did, you weren't coming out alive? No. Her testimony and I uh, paint the picture that when the ATF arrived, they were always going to be ambushed and attacked. It is heartbreaking to have somebody from your community who you are all protecting break apart and say all these things on the stand. It's another type of assault. 
Kathy Schroeder had a lot on the line in terms of her kids in custody, and she had lost her husband, uh, who was shot by the ATF. She had a lot of reasons to do what she did. Um, so that testimony is that we portray in the show is um, all real. Only on Showtime, and now stream Showtime on Paramount+.